Egypt. Joseph of Arimathea. Now, does anybody know Joseph of Arimathea? Okay. He was Jesus' uncle. He was a merchant who traded in tin, the metal tin. And down in Somerset and down in those West Country locations, um, there were tin mines. So he used to travel from Jerusalem by boat and land at Glastonbury. Now Glastonbury now hasn't got the sea there anymore. The waters have receded slightly and there's low land. Okay. Slightly. Slightly. A couple of miles. <laughs> but it is believed that Joseph of Arimathea brought Jesus to Glastonbury in the years. Now, you guys that know the Bible will know that there's a big gap between Jesus when he was born and then when suddenly he was in his late teens or 20s or wherever it is, of his childhood. The childhood is miss missing. It's believed that he traveled with his uncle to lots of different locations, but certainly to Glastonbury. And he had his, some of his education there in Glastonbury. In Glastonbury, there is an abbey now, a large, you know what an abbey is, guys? Yeah? An abbey like a church that's a huge monastery type mm -hmm. place, which is now in ruins that dates back. But Joseph of Arimathea and Jesus as the, the little boy started the first Christian church. In Glastonbury. In the UK. In the UK. In the UK. Um, and it's believed that, as I say, Jesus had lots of his young years there. Now, obviously, we know the story of Jesus. The interesting story, as it goes on further, is that at the crucifixion of Jesus, there was a cup, a chalice that collected some of the drops of blood of Jesus. And it's believed, and I'm going funny as I say this, so angels, thank you. That's why I'm getting all tingly. Whenever I talk about this, I get all tingly, so I yeah. know it's true. Joseph of Arimathea took the chalice cup and he brought it to Glastonbury. When he landed at Glastonbury, carrying this he had his uh, followers with him. He had a star, a wooden star. Now, you guys that have got our Ascended Master cards will see that there is Joseph of Arimathea mm -hmm. with a star. Mm -hmm. He landed at a place called Wirial Hill. Mm -hmm. When he landed, he planted his star on the ground, and from it grow, grew a holy thorn tree. This holy thorn tree literally grew instantly and he took the cup and he hid it in what's known as the Tor. Now the Tor in Glastonbury is a very large hill and there's a small chapel at the top. You can go up the Tor. I'm going to see if I can find any pictures on my phone of it. If I can, I'll show you guys through the evening. He hid it and buried it to keep it safe <coughs> because they realized that this chalice had the power of everlasting youth and health. The, word, the, the chalice was buried at the base of the tour. At the base of the tour today, there is the most magical garden called the Chalice Well Garden. And in there, water comes up from underneath the tor <coughs> and through the garden and you can collect this water this is this spiritual water that we brought you these are their bottles and everything and this as i say it's got details at the bottom so you can always read up a bit more it's the most spiritual location we feel in the uk we run retreats there we love it there it's it's like a haven when you go in the garden it's like immense peace, serenity, I can't really describe it. A world peace garden. A world peace garden, yeah. You can travel from all over the world to go there. 
Now, interestingly enough, um, next to this garden, there is another well, which is called the White Well. The chalice well water comes out quite red in color. The well next to it, the White Well, is white in color. And it's believed to be the white and the red blood cells of Jesus. And the white and the red come out and they intermingle. Okay. So, this water that we've got here is half red, half white from the garden for you. We love the place. We can, we can talk about it forever. Interestingly enough, the staff that was planted, the thorn that grew from that, that thorn tree only blossoms at Easter and Christmas. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. And when it blossoms, they take a cutting and they send it to the Queen every Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's very special. So, there, obviously the tree that's there now has unfortunately been vandalized. No. Yeah, it was cut down. But there are other cuttings of it, but it's not obviously the original from a thousand years ago. It's, it's an offspring of it, but there are other cuttings within the garden no. and within the abbey. The abbey also has extra energies in Glastonbury because it is believed to be the, birth, sorry, the burial place of King Arthur and Guinevere. And they have their tomb there in the abbey. And Glastonbury is in what we call the Isle of Avalon. Okay? Avalon is believed to be King Arthur's, where King Arthur lived and knights met and so on. The story goes on, I'm going to talk about it all evening because we're passionate about the Arthurian legend and the knights and everything. So, this is where this water comes from. We <laughs> 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 shipped you. it for you. Thank you. Because we wanted you to have some. Now, what I will say is that even though this is pure water, when you're making your sprays, you can use bottled water. I wouldn't use tap water. But you can use mineral water or, you know, uh, drinking water. But you only need to put a few drops of this in and it spreads throughout the rest of the water. You do not need to use 100% this, okay? Oh, good. It's like at one. Yeah. So it will uh, yes. <laughs> Ration it. Yes. What you need to do really is keep this in the fridge, okay? It will make it last longer. And don't be afraid if you start to see it going a bit red at the bottom because that's the content of the red blood cells and such. That's the iron content, basically. That's the iron okay. <laughs> So, I'm just saying that to you, but you've all got one of these to take away with you tonight. We've already infused the water that we're going to use, so you don't need to use this. This is for you to take. Have a read up about the chalice well, all the energies. We get all of our water for all of our sprays from the chalice well. That's what goes into our sprays. That's the first thing. The second thing that goes into our sprays is crystals. And crystals have their own vibration. Now we put crystals in because we want to add the energies of those crystals, the properties of those crystals. We then also add some essential oils. And we're going to show you how to do this. And it's interesting how it comes together, okay? The essential oils add their qualities, but the essential oil is also because being human, we like things to smell nice. Mm -hmm. It's not so critical. This is Louise. Hi. Hey, Louise. Hi. Welcome. You haven't missed much, Louise, so don't worry. Pop your stuff at the side there and grab a chair. Oh, yeah, I know. I spray you asked. Oh, crikey. I've been crawling today. <laughs> That's all right. Grab a seat. What color is the blossom of the tree? It comes out as white. Oh. Just a white blossom with slight pink shades. Okay. With pink shades. Pinky, pinky bits in the middle. Yeah. But it's only at Easter and Christmas. Yes. The times of Jesus, obviously. Mm -hmm. so can I ask something? Yeah. 
If we see that our wa the water, you know, we're using it up, even if it's just drops, can we add bottled water and the one that's there will infuse it and continue? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. But what I'm saying to you is I don't know what there is around here. You mentioned hot springs, but you know anywhere that you can get special water, you can do it. You don't have to have the special water, okay? You can just put all the energies in. Okay. It's just another thing that we put in, okay? That's why we bought this for you. So, um, these are special water that we're going to use to make the springs, okay? I'll, I'll talk to you afterwards and explain about it. So, we use crystals, we use essential oils, and then we also create a label with a name. Okay? But, the most important thing is to think about what you would like your sprays to do, what you want them for. Because in the end of the day, if you want it for you, that's fine, but maybe you have somebody that you would like to make one for, that's fine. Um, think about the energies that you want to place in. So, what we've got is we've got um, an information sheet which we're going to pass around to you on the Archangels. And we're just going to talk you through that so that you can understand the different Archangels. It may help you decide on the energies that you want to place in to your spray. Right, those of you who have been with us the last Sunday will recognize this. Yeah, definitely. Mm. As much as you want to place Thank you. Like Almost. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the Archangel information, but Martha just asked a question Can you put more than one Archangel energy in? Yes, you can put as many as you want. <coughs> but it's not just about the angels. One of the other things that we do with our sprays is we charge our sprays under the full moon. <coughs> and this is because the full moon is a manifesting moon, okay? So what we do, and you can do this in two ways, okay? You can play clever, or you can play... <laughs> what you can do is charge your water under the full moon, <coughs> or you can charge your individually made spray, okay, you can do either, either will work. When we're making ours, we want the full moon energy of manifestation, of bringing forward anything that we're going to put into that spray to come to fruition. So we use the full moon energies to charge our spray to basically ensure that any of the qualities that we put in will be supercharged. So as a result, all of our water gets charged under the full moon. We don't have to think, oh, that's going to be for Michael, or that's going to be for such. We charge it in that way. Okay? We just charge all the water, and then we use that, and we put the energies into the water that's already been charged with the full moon. If you work with any other moon things, or any other times of the moon, then by all means, use that in any way that you want. The other thing that you can do, and I don't know if Marco's got any, you can also charge your sprays with sound. So if you want to use your ting charge, your ball. bowls, you can charge it with sound to, to put sound activation into it. Okay? So anything you want to put into that spray is fine, but just make sure that it's done with the right intent, with the right frame of mind. You do not want to be making sprays if you're negative, because whatever you're feeling will be going into that spray. It's about being happy with what you're doing. And this is why I get shut out of the room when Zena's making sprays. She's working in there, and, and I might be in the office, and she says, I'm in my space, I'm calling the angel, and she works away in there, and I leave her alone for the day, and she works on these sprays. Because you don't want the, oh, I just had a phone call from them, and you know, all of that stuff. Okay, so it's important. Tonight, it's important to think about what you want your spray to be, but also make sure that you make it with love and with happiness and so on. No negativity, okay? Very important. So, you're going to talk through the... I will. The way, what, we do, what we're going to do is show you uh, the express route. 
to make some sprays. I mean, some of these sprays that uh, we've done, this baby, the Guardian Angel, if I tell you it took me five years, and the reason being is the way we make our sprays is that we are given, well, we're given permission, basically, from the particular angels. They say, okay, we're ready for you to make a spray. So we made the archangel, we made some archangel sprays, and then basically I said, I would like to make a guardian angel spray. And I wanted to make a violet flame spray. Um, but it wasn't coming to me. And that's because it wasn't the right time to make them. As I say, five years it took. At January this year, I finally got the messages, you can now make the <laughs> <laughs> guardian angel spray. <laughs> it's very true. So it took all that time. And this spray, I will tell you what has gone into this. It's everything you always just said. Um, and basically, I bought the energy of my guardian angel. Well, I didn't, they bought themselves. Neil's guardian angel. And what happened when I sat in meditation, everybody's guardian angel, which is very bizarre to say, but I could see everybody's guardian angel that was going to buy the spray or had the spray was there. So that's what's in this spray. <laughs> that was, it took so long. And um, so, yes, yeah, some sprays can take a long time, but we're doing an express route. So, <laughs> so what Zena's saying really is that, you know, think about what you want in these sprays tonight, but when you go forward and make sprays, you'll be guided when to do them, and you'll know the energies are right, and you, you, may, you may find that you start something and then you leave it, and, you know, you, you, I, I don't know, it's going to be a bit like that. Ask, you know, over the years, we've only made, I don't know, maybe nine different sprays over the last yeah. seven years, that's it. We could have made zillions, but we're thinking about the energies that we want to pass on to everybody because we're selling our sprays. We're, we're selling them to help people to connect and such. So it's a bit of a different vibration. We really want to make sure that those archangels are ready, those angels are ready, or whatever the energies are. And, and that's why it takes a long time for some of them to come through. Yeah, because we're not just kind of saying, oh, I'm going to make a, I don't know, Okay, yeah, let's, let's just yeah. make a, you know, a, a fancy spray for this or a fancy yeah. spray for that. But the idea tonight is to give you the empowering information so you know how to do it, um, you know what you can do. Then you can go away and spend as much time as you want in wherever you live, working with whatever energies you work with. So if you work shamanically, you can make a shamanic spray. If you work um, with Reiki, you can do a Reiki spray. Whatever you want to do, you can do with a spray. It's so versatile. But the one thing we love about it is that any of our sprays, because they're made with the right intention, with a high vibration, they can be universal for not only the aura, but for clearing space, bringing positivity into rooms, bringing positivity into other people's lives. So they, the, if we hadn't put that energy into it, they wouldn't be as versatile as that. So it's important to think about that when you're doing it. So you, you know, if you've got somebody that struggles with fatigue, you may want an uplifting spray. If you've got somebody that needs help at work, um, well, you know, the most common one is protection. Okay, the most most people want, you know, something to protect themselves. The other one we use a lot of is obviously removing negativity. So we use our sprays a lot when we're doing healing. And it's not because those people are negative, but we want to clear the space between customers, clients, and it, it clears the energy of the room and over ourselves, lifts our vibration up, we're ready to go again. Okay, it's, it's just fantastic, really. So let's go through the archangel, shall we? You want to go through? Sure. No so you've got 15 archangels there, guys. Yeah. Do you want to go for it? It says same. There's a boy. I don't know. Okay. So all of the archangels mm. multitask. Okay. So really and truly, you could bring any of them in, but they do have specific roles. Okay. 
me, as, as most of us know. So let's quickly go through the 15 that we've got here. Obviously, there's thousands more 